Great. Thank you, Marty. Um, I don't know if there's a, a good way to do this, but I don't know. I'm trying to get a sense of uh, who's here. So um, I thought this session might be useful for, for doctoral students in particular. Um, I don't know if there's a way to do a maybe a show of hands using the gestures so we can see um, where folks are from and uh, if you're a doctoral student or, or perhaps what you even hope to get out of this session. So if we could um, try and do that maybe with uh, Anne-Marie. Can we start with you? Uh, Noel. Oh, Anne-Marie is from Australia. Thank you. You can use the chat as well. From Oklahoma. And Jack in the cheap seats in the back. Scotland, wow, we have people from all over. And Ra? Okay, well, we'll get started. Um, uh, thank you, Ra. Excellent. And Deborah is a doctoral student as well. So um, what, what I'm hoping to accomplish with, with today's session is just to give you some, some overview of um, how to structure particularly survey data, but really, really uh, any kind of data. Um, how to structure it for analysis in uh, my focus is on Easy Analyze. It's a, a program I developed that's an add-in for Excel. But uh, the same concepts apply to SPSS. So I will, um, I will uh, try to uh, make references to, to SPSS where I can as well. Um, now, as far as, uh, can I repeat the chat for the folks in the web stream? Um, we had folks from Oklahoma, um, Florida, um, Ohio, mostly doctoral students from what I understand. So uh, thank you for pointing that out, Jack, and, uh, and Australia. So thank you for pointing that, that out, that uh, I forgot that there is a web stream going on that some folks might not be able to see what happens in the local chat window. You're welcome. Um, Okay, so without further ado, this is my first time doing anything really in, in Second Life other than uh, flying around. Um, I've met with, uh, with, with Marty uh, Kimbo a couple of times here, um, but I really haven't done so much in it. So this is a new adventure f for me. All right, so as I already alluded to, um, the focus of this presentation is on structuring things for uh, data Data use with Easy Analyze, which is again a, an Excel add-in that I developed, freely available at easyanalyze.com. But the most of the concepts are transferable to SPSS. There are, are actually some data entry advantages in, to doing data entry in Excel that we'll talk about um, a little bit later. So, and I've also built some tools into um, Easy Analyze that are particularly useful. So. Uh, useful for checking and, and structuring data. So we'll talk about those things. So some other things I wanted to point out. Um, while uh, paper surveys um, I don't think are going the way of the dinosaurs anytime soon, there are plenty of online survey sites that you can use. One I wanted to bring to your attention is a site called counselingtechnology.net. It's a site created by Tim Baker who was a uh, doctoral student down in Florida, who now is a faculty member at St. Cloud State, I believe, in, uh, in Minnesota. He developed this website, counselingtechnology.net, that offers a couple of things. The one um, that is, I think, the most robust is his uh, survey online survey development tool. It's free for counselors, and um, it creates surveys that uh, Pretty pretty simple surveys um, through a relatively intuitive user interface that, um, when you download the data, are compatible with SPSS and Easy Analyze, and and the data are structured pretty well. We actually collaborated a little bit on how to structure the data to make it most useful for analysis in uh, in an offline environment, if you will. Um, Easy Analyze, as I already mentioned, is freely available at EasyAnalyze.com, and it's a free add-in for Excel that just makes Excel easier to use. Some people have referred to it actually as SPSS Lite. It certainly doesn't have the power of, of SPSS, but it is free and it is relatively easy to use. And uh, if you can put these tools together, it makes your data collection and analysis easy. Um, so I mentioned the, the online survey development. 
oftentimes if you do an online survey, it um, removes some of the thinking behind how to structure your data because a lot of times these online survey tools will make it so that uh, your data are structured for analysis already. But all right, so we'll talk here about creating a data template. So again, we're, we're kind of assuming you're starting off with a paper survey. So when we're going to uh, create a data entry template somewhere where either us or a designee are going to enter data from paper surveys into a database for analysis. Um, for doing this in Excel, we need to structure the data so that the first row contains the variable labels. And uh, in SPSS, if you're familiar with SPSS, you define the variables in the variable view. So in SPSS, the first row is actually data entry um, in the data view. But in the vari variable view, um, is where you define your variables and they get put into the first row in the data sheet. So um, you can enter data in Excel and import it into um, SPSS quite easily. It works quite well. So, so once we've got the first row, our, our variables defined, what, what we're calling them, um, each remaining row contains the data from one person or one survey, and that's, that's a key. Um, sometimes we get data that we download from other data sources that violates this principle of having more than one uh, one row per subject. And the way that SPSS easy analyze most data analysis programs calculate their statistics, it runs off this assumption that each row contains one person's data. So we need to be really mindful of that. Um, to, to structure our data properly, we can apply apply a few more rules. Something else I like to do when I'm, whenever I'm um, taking paper surveys and putting them into a database is make sure that each survey um, is coded so that later if we notice a data entry error or something like that, we can go back to the paper version and correct the error. Um, data entry errors are not uncommon. So um, I think this is a really good idea to do it. Most of us do it somewhat intuitively where um, we'll, we'll put a, write a number on the survey and uh, put that into the database. But we can do a couple of other things with that ID number to contain additional information. So it's not just a number to link the survey with what's in the database, but it can contain the date that the survey was coded or perhaps administered. Um, it can contain a code for who actually gave the survey out to people. If you have multiple people giving the surveys, uh, if you're doing this in a school, you can use a code number to figure out which classroom the survey was given in. So um, we can be kind of creative with that ID number. And if, if identifying information is, is on the surveys that we're um, coding into the database, we want to make sure that we take steps to ensure the confidentiality of respondents is maintained. We Most oftentimes, we don't need to. If there is a name on the survey, we don't need their name in, in the database for, for analysis. And that's just a, a nice thing to do to make sure that our data are confidential. <clears throat> 